What's up, everyone? It's another edition of your favorite show and mine. But actually, it's super rad today because I'm going to uh, do something crazy. We're going to do an extensive webinar on my favorite topic. Being an anomaly, standing out, being absolutely ridiculous. And I'm super excited to share it with you you today. If throughout this time together you have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and as I go through I will stop and stare, stop and go and answer your questions throughout. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get in to the awesome. So, again, if you guys have questions, let me know as you go through, and I'm happy to share them with you. So I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a very simple question. Simply, what, and I actually hate asking people this question, but I think what's important is, for the context of this, it's really freaking important for you to know what this answer is. What do you do? Right? What is it that when you go to the majority of networking events, when you go to the majority of places, when, when, when you're on LinkedIn, what is it that you put on your what is it that you put on your resume? What do you do? Okay? What is it? it and it doesn't matter what it is. I think it's amazing that you do something. We all do something. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. But what I want you to be thinking about right now is what is that thing? What is that thing that you do? What do you do? Okay. Now, before we get super deep into this, I want you to do something that might be scary and challenging too. I want you to ask your network simply, what do you think I do? What is it? What is it? So I'll ask you guys that question right now in the comments. Feel free to, uh, to respond, right? What is it that you think that I do for a living? What is it that you think that I do or the brand, you know, whatever that brand is that you have DJ, whatever your name is, what do you think I do? Right? And get those answers because what is about to happen is something that I think you're going to be absolutely flabbergasted at something that you are going to be like, Whoa, I did not expect that to be your answer because what the answer is going to be is something so ridiculously wrong that you need to fix it because your messaging or the messaging that is being consumed by those people that you want to be consuming you is way off, right? And so an example I'll give you is maybe I eat ground beef and turkey and chicken and barbecue ribs. And the person who's talking to me says, oh, I think you're a vegan, which means I don't eat meat. Something as simple as that we want to make sure that people know what we do by the messages that we send out. Now, I'm not saying I want you to be this, you know, annoying salesperson. You don't want to be that annoying car salesman. No, not at all. I don't want you to do that at all. But I want people, when they get nosy, when they're searching through your profiles to know who you are, when they're seeing the content that you push out, I want them to know who you are. If someone simply said Zach Miller is a WWE fan that has a rock poster behind him, I'm totally cool with that, right? It's different. It's odd. It's whatever. Oh, Zach also likes the Ninja Turtles. Whatever. That's fine. I'm an anomaly. It's weird. But you want to make sure that what people, what you do, people actually can grasp out of what you're pushing out. And I think oftentimes by asking that group of people, your current network, what they think you do, you'll be amazed at the answers. Most of the time, it's not the answer that you want. So what do you have to do? You need to get into the driver's seat and simply create content and messaging that 
drives down what you do in a correct manner. Because if not, you know what happens, right? You don't get that new business. They don't know what you do. They think you do something else, and then maybe they introduce you to someone. They're like, oh, I want you to meet Zach, and uh, he is actually uh, trying out for Miss America. Well, we all know that's wrong. But oftentimes, the messaging is so wrong that people think that uh, what happens is it's it's a lose-lose instead of a win-win. And that's absolutely exactly what we don't want to do. So, I want to ask you guys another question. When you meet someone for the first time, let's just say, call it at a, we'll call it at a networking event. When you meet someone for the first time, by a show of hands, literally I want you to raise your hand as you are watching this, by a show of hands, or feel free to, you know, in the comments, whatever, how many of you have met someone at a networking event for the first time, pitch them your business, and right there on the spot, that business said yes. I've asked this question a lot. Honestly, I've only been in a room once where someone has said that they have done this. Literally, meet person first time. They meet someone for the first time. Let's just call that a networking event. And they go in and say, I do X, buy my thing. And right there on the spot... It works. Now look, sometimes this actually happens. Right? For those of you, Matt, Alito, congrats, guys. Absolutely amazed that you can do that. However, the overwhelming majority of the time, people aren't in the room to be sold to. So, if they are in the room to be sold to, I get it. You got to sell to them. Absolutely. Right? If someone calls you on your contact us page from your website and says, Hey, I want this thing, sell them. But the overwhelming majority of the time, people are not ready for that thing. Yes, there are anomalies out there, but most of the time people just want to, um, you know, create a relationship with that person. So a few weeks ago, I was in the studio recording my audio book anomaly, how to finally stand out from the crowd. Enough of that. And what's interesting is while I was in the studio, the guy on the left is Chris Lane. He's the main producer. He does all my video work. And the guy in the middle, that's Jesse. I don't know what Jesse's last name is, but Jesse. Um, and hey, Leslie, what's up? Um, if you guys have questions throughout, feel free to just ask them and I'll get to them when I get to them. But I will get to them. And so I'm recording uh, the audio, which took roughly, f I can't remember if it was four or five, four hour sessions to, to do the book. Uh, it's in Audible's hands. They haven't officially approved it, but I'm fairly positive they're going to approve it, minus the introduction, which the introduction was very different, and I don't think they're going to approve it. But I'm okay with that because I recorded one that wasn't as crazy. Basically, the audio was me, something like this. Welcome to Anomaly! I, I was trying to be like that, you know, like 1993 to 19, probably 2000 Chicago Bulls arena announcer the one was like from north carolina number 23 michael jeffrey jordan it was something like that anyway we don't think they're going to approve it but the publisher and i are hoping that they will and we'll see what happens but anyway so i'm recording this audio with these guys and i get a phone call I'm like who the heck is this i don't know who it is i didn't answer it but then i checked the message and it's like a sales call i'm like geez like what the heck i don't know this person why they sell it to me then jesse five minutes later also gets a sales call from someone else not trying to you know buy these services or anything from these people but we we get these calls all the time and instead it's not that i'm always against the services that they're pitching but in the way that they're doing it i think there's a better way to do that and that better way to do it is to not call me and say, buy my thing. Instead, I think it takes a series of conversations that as you have them, you take them down. And then when the time is right, they buy from you, basically. Because look, we all need to make money. And by the way, I don't think that this whole freemium world that a lot of people want to live in is necessarily amazing. 
I I think you have to pay for certain things, and I think that's called life. That's called business. That's that's what you have to do, right? You go to an amusement park, you pay the hundred dollars to ride the rides. It's what happens, right? So I bought a house recently, and I'm in the backyard. I'm installing a dog fence. Knock knock knock. I'm like, I don't know who that is. I'm not going to answer it. I'll get to it later. Look on the app on my phone. I'm like, I don't know who this person is, but it's probably a neighbor. It's whatever. I'll, I'll get to it later. Two minutes goes by. Ding dong. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'll just answer the door and see what it is. Hi, are you the homeowner? And I'm like, oh boy, it's not a neighbor. It's a sales call. It's actually a security business who's trying to sell me. And I actually have a security system already on the home. I'm actually looking at him through my through the app that I was using. And the guy would not leave. He kept trying to tell me why some, he was better than someone else, yada, yada, yada. And the important thing of this is instead of creating a great relationship with me, instead of creating a friendly atmosphere, he was trying to basically pound and pound and pound until I would say yes. And I think that strategy is wrong because at the end of the day, instead of me buying from him and being happy, I'm unhappy and actually talking crap about that business. Now, the business that's listed here is not the business. So don't call that number. That was mean of me to do that. Whatever. But it's like a call center. You know, how often are you in a call center? Do you get a call from a call center? How often does that happen? Right? And you get the call and it's someone trying to sell you some maybe security system. Maybe it's like some um, some credit card. Whatever might be your your cable people still have cable i guess it's 2019 i think most people are getting rid of that but my point is this is we get these annoying sales calls and so instead of actually having great relationships with these people we're bombarded we're annoyed and we're ticked off and we highly unlikely buy from them right instead go in be nice create a relationship great things happen now this is something very profound that i don't think most people think about a lot of us worry about, and I was actually on a phone call with someone right before this. Shout out to Kenya Williams of iShine. I was on a phone call with him, and he was like, is so-and-so your competitor? And he named someone. I was like, I, I don't know. I don't care. I'm not worried about that person, right? Like, if uh, I, I just don't care. Why? Because I don't have to worry about my competitor. I have to worry about the 5,000 ads that you see each and every day. Let me repeat that. You consume, you see, you deal with 5,000 different ads a day. And so when you are thinking, well, I, hello again, I need to worry about Joe Schmo across the street who does the exact same thing as me. I think that's wrong. Right, That person isn't waking up going, am I going to choose A or am I going to choose B? They're waking up not thinking about either of you. And here's the really challenging part is that during this whole thing, what ends up happening is someone else in one of those ads, one of those 4,999 other ads, those campaigns of things, they grab your attention and you forget about, they forget about you. And that's not good. So instead, make sure that you are trying to get these people's attention in a positive kind of way. One thing that you may or may not remember or may or may not have ever heard of is something that is absolutely mind boggling to me. And that is simply this, that in a sales funnel, which is the process of taking um, your prospects and turning them into customers, takes typically five to seven positive interactions if you have a negative situation in there, it takes 35 interactions to get them back up, which is absolutely insane. And then if you have that bad interaction, you may never get them back. So 35 negative, 30, you have a negative interaction with them. It takes at least 35 positive interactions to get them back. And that may never happen. All right. Questions. Do you guys have questions so far on any of the concepts that I'm bringing up? If you simply do, simply say hello in the comments. Well, don't say hello. I mean, give me your comment or whatever it is. If you're listening to this as a replay later, feel free to, wherever you're listening, 
ask that question if the comments are enabled, which they should be. If not, I did a bad job being an MC. Or hit me up on my email. It's Zach, not Zach, Z-A-C-K, at startwithhatch.com. Okay? Ask the questions, and I'll answer them. So, moving along. You want to stand out. Right, With 5,000 different ads that we see a day, which one of these actually is standing out? Is it the yellow or the blue? No, I'm colorblind, so I really don't know the answer. Right, They all look the same to me. But I'm told that line two, basically block two, two, is the winner. Right? That is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. And why? Because it stands out. How many of you guys have ever been to a networking event where everyone looked the same? Maybe you like one of these. You know, everyone in this room looks the same. So what do you have to do? You have to do things that stand out so that people are not at these events snoozing off which so many people encounter why because it's boring it's absolutely ridiculous it's boring and no one wants to be there simply put you could do it like jared leto who is a musician an actor and someone you might know of no maybe this is a little too extreme right maybe this is maybe this is too extreme right i don't know I don't think this is too extreme. I think it's hilarious and great and is someone that I I look at and I say, man, that is great. I think it's wonderful that he's out there, you know, showing off what he can do. And he's getting the attention, right? Where most men at these events, too, by the way, are not the ones that are looked at. It's usually females that get all the love. And here he is trying to get a little bit of love is my guess. I don't know the guy. Never met him. Never talked to him. I've listened to like three or four of his songs. But he stands out. Or you could do it, you know, the self-proclaimed Zach Miller way, which is simply jeans and a black t-shirt. Right? Not everything has to be, by the way, in a physical way. Right? If you think about the Golden Arches versus Chick-fil-A, the Golden Arches, you know, bad connotation behind it, but lots of negativity behind it. Right? Chick-fil-A, you know, lots of positivity behind it. People love going and getting a number one with the fries and a sweet tea, right? And people will gladly and profoundly talk about that. But here's the difference. Their big thing could just be customer service and saying, my pleasure, when you say thank you. Again, 5,000 different ads a day. I'm running through 10 of them right now, right? It just happens and it happens so freaking quickly right you have to get someone's attention right one trick that i have implemented that i think is pretty interesting is that a lot of people have social profiles and as they're putting together their social profiles they will have one screen name for linkedin they will have a different screen name for twitter or facebook or whatever app of the day and their website, everything's different. For me, I unified everything. Everything is the same. My website, ZachMillerSays.com. If you're watching on Facebook, Facebook.com backslash my name says dot Facebook.com slash Zach Miller says Twitter slash Zach Miller says LinkedIn. Zach Miller says why? Continuity. It's easier. Like you whatever you're doing to make it easy and then i can sell it right i can be like hey like follow me at zach miller says everywhere instead of being at the thing like okay well if you're on twitter you can follow me at underscore z plus a and then on facebook you can do zach underscore m three four right it's just easier to say zach miller says across the board it rolls out and hopefully people will remember that right and then where they go and find you everywhere else Everything is the same. So if you're one of those people that has scattered social profiles, it might be a good idea for you to unify all those into one. Now remember, a sales funnel is simply taking your target customers, your prospects, which could be all of these tennis balls on a court representing who you want as your customer. It could be all of those things mixed into one 
And at some point, you put them through some sort of sales funnel, which is the process of moving them from one step to the, to the next. Remember, five to seven positive interactions. And what happens is as they get closer down the funnel, you'll learn that maybe one of them, maybe two, maybe three of them convert into a customer. But you have to have a ton of conversations. You have to have a ton of movement moving forward to gauge that interest. Right? A lot of people go to networking events. They meet five people there, and those are the only five people that they meet a month. Well, my math says that you have to go to 20 networking events, meet five people at each of those to convert one of those if that's your kind of database number, your standard number, right? Yes, different businesses have higher and lower numbers. Yes, yeah, some people's like 0.01 is a really good conversion for some people. Some people, right, the number might be a little higher and that's fine, right? But you got to know what those numbers are and those numbers are high or if they're low. Right. And so then you have a base point. Right. I remember I came up with this concept when I ran my first uh, half marathon. I would people were like, what time are you trying to run it in? I'm like, I've never done it before. I don't know. I like I just want to finish. Right. I'm currently training for an Ironman race. People are like, what's your time going to be? I don't know. I'm trying to just finish. Right. Now, if I ever get stupid enough to do a second one, then I could say, OK, the first time I did this in you know, X, Y, Z hours. So then if I do it again, the goal should be to beat that X, Y, Z hours or on the three different disciplines, you know, do the same two times on one and less on the other, whatever it might be, or it might be a feeling standpoint. Again, it's all about data in this point, uh, in this respect. And what I want you to be thinking about is in your sales funnel, you have to bring in a lot of people, a lot of balls, right? Each one of these balls represents a conversation, a prospect that you need. And maybe, just maybe, only one of those balls out of those hundreds becomes a client. But then you at least have a base point, which is totally freaking important. Now, I think a lot of us have all the content that we need. We just need to massage it better throughout our funnels. And what I mean by that is, yes, you meet someone at a networking event. And yes, they're looking for information on how to uh, write a better story or ways to improve their website or get a DJ to their um, to their party or they're looking for a, a photo booth for their wedding. Instead of just sending them an invoice saying, hey, buy my thing, it might be advantageous for you or I have found that it's more advantageous for you to dig a little deeper first. Right. I'm not saying waste 10 days, 10 hours of time doing this. I'm just saying it might be better for you to follow up with them afterwards. So you just say, hey, you meet them. Hashtag just say, hey, I'm the I'm the leader of the just say, hey, movement. Right. So you meet someone at a networking event. You talk to them. You know that they actually sell what you are looking for, what you sell. And instead of trying to sell them right there. You want to dig a little deeper, right? You want to have a great conversation with them, follow up afterwards, and then dig a little deeper and probe them to figure out if what they're looking for is actually what you can do. Why do you do this? Because you're trying to improve that number so that it's not one tennis ball, it's all the tennis balls, right? The better understanding you have of this information, the better chance you have of winning. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to do, right? And so a lot of times we have the, uh, the, the message and the branding and the content already established. We just have it hidden or we throw it out at the wrong, at the wrong time. Think about what you're sending as you send it and make sure that a piece of content that you have can reinforce what you're trying to do. Because oftentimes I think that you can send a piece of content that can explain to someone how you do X, Y, Z, it can be very powerful in converting them at a later time, right? A lot of times people say they want to work with you even on the spot. You're still many steps in the funnel before they get that credit card out, right? How many times have you been on Amazon, think that you're going to buy a pair of socks and you just put it in the cart and you never buy, right? Then what do they do? They email you, they follow back up with you. They say, Hey, we just wanted to let you know that those socks are still available. Oh, hey, by the way, maybe we'll give you a discount on those socks. Or, oh, you didn't like these socks. Here's another pair of socks that are different, but we think you might like them, right? Why do they do that? 
I don't know, probably because 64% of carts are left empty, excuse me, left with an item in it. If Amazon has this problem, you sure as heck are going to have this problem too. All right, so you meet someone, you hold the door for them. Could you strike up a conversation with them right then? Absolutely. You're at a networking event. Why wouldn't you try to spark up a conversation with them? Most people are going to be so surprised that you even held the door for them that they're going to probably say something like, thank you so much. And then you say, hey, it's great to meet you. Why are you at the gym today? Oh, what are you studying for right now? Or my favorite, what are you watching on Netflix? People think this is the craziest thing ever. But if I can find out what someone is binge watching every weekend or every night, and maybe I watch that show too, then instead of having to connect with them every time about business, which obviously is what is important, business is important, right? You got to feed the family, got to feed yourself. But oftentimes, if you have that real relationship with someone, they're going to do business with you, right? I own a Jeep, right? I know a guy who owns a Jeep um, fixing place that I can't think of, uh, a shop, a Jeep shop, right? When my Jeep needs work, guess where I'm going to take it? To Matt Beach, right? Because he is an individual who now I have talked with several times and has built that relationship. And I know that he has a Jeep because I know what he does, right? And when the time is right, and I need it issues. What do I do? Exactly, Matt. Right? So not everyone is always... I own a Jeep. I'm clearly his customer. Right? And I haven't had the issue yet. That's a slight lie. My dealership... Quick story. My dealership screwed me earlier in the year. And I couldn't get out of it. But if I know beforehand that I have to go and get work done, I'm going to call Matt Beach and Beach Cheap Repair. It doesn't even matter that I don't know the name of his business. I'm going to call him, right? And so oftentimes we're trying to get that business so long, but that person doesn't have that problem yet. But when they do, guess who they're going to call? Matt Beach or the Ghostbusters or Zach Miller or Leslie or John like or Woody. Like These are the things that matter, right? Oh, so freaking often... People are trying to be like, buy my thing right now. It's like they don't have the problem right now. They don't have the issue yet. But guess what? When they do, guess what they're going to do? They're going to call you. Of course I am. I met this individual, Mark Rowan of Rowan Reads. Actually, he's with Hackworth, which is a business that does a lot of printing. And I met him at an open house of my office a few years ago. And afterwards, um, we were talking, and I just enjoyed my conversation with him. He grew up in West Virginia, so he's a friend of Morgantown and West Virginia University, which is where I went to school. And I simply sent him a handwritten card. This is actually the handwritten, the handwritten card. I think he took a picture of it or a video or something like that. And um, and it basically says, "Hey, enjoyed meeting you." Um, it was fun, excited, blah, 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 right? Obviously there's four lines, nothing crazy. And then I signed it because at some point he's going to want to resell that. Duh. Because that autograph is worth so much money. But anyway, he's followed me on, um, no business really has ever happened between the two of us. Um, but my book went out on a Kickstarter about a year ago, year and a half ago. And Mark was like, oh, I'll throw down. I'll give you the, you know, the 20 bucks to buy the book. And what's crazy is he gets the book when we did a, a pre everyone that pre-ordered it beforehand, like from the Kickstarter, got a picture and a picture um, got invited to this party and Mark came and then he started reading it. And then as he was reading it was like, oh, I really like this. I'm going to start doing a video uh, kind of recap of every piece of the book every chapter of the book and so he did two chapters a day for like a month and why i think this is important is because i now got into his network 21 times and really we're talking about 20 bucks worth of transactions ever happened right he bought the book that's it but 
He followed along, was part of webinars like this, watched, enjoyed, liked, and liked that I was providing him value that then he at some point decided that it was important to do something back for me. Right? And so when the book first came out, 21 different videos that he did basically going over the book, what he liked about it. And actually what's pretty cool about it is hearing someone else's feedback or description on how they read one of the concepts or something like that. And so that's always interesting to get people's different versions of what you wrote. And, but now I'm in now, obviously we're friends, but what's really powerful here is you probably have these champions somewhere in your network and just massaging that relationship can get something so much more powerful. Actually, even yesterday they sent out an email to their distribution list saying, Hey, you guys should check out this book. That's where it becomes very powerful. So then it's not just me and my network or you and your network. It's someone else sharing your business journey whatever as well. I think winning is super easy, but all too often we're not willing to do what it takes to win. I guess I need to update this picture because Tom Brady now has six wins. Sorry to all the people who hate the Patriots. I'm not a Patriots fan, but I think it's funny. Champions. We're all champions, right? As we record this, it's March 19th and I wanted to let you guys know that it is award season. Now, award season is something that is completely crazy to me because what it is, it usually is at the beginning of the year. Ah. It's usually at the beginning of the year. And what happens is... There's a lot of nominations open and available for you to win a specific award. Now, maybe you have a brand, a business, you work for a business. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is simply search whatever like the keywords are that you do. So like marketing awards in Norfolk, Virginia. What you'll find is that there's a lot of opportunities to win awards in Norfolk, Virginia for marketing or for car repair shops or, um, you know, design consultancies or whatever, right? Social media strategy awards. If you qualify for it, apply. A lot of them are super, super easy to win. And then you can market the crap out of them later by saying, hey, guess what? I won XYZ award because I I qualified, so I applied. What's interesting about this is most people won't actually uh, won't actually apply because they'll feel like they're not they're not worth it. And what I think is this is something I did really early on in my business career. I didn't even necessarily realize how powerful it is, is as I started applying to these awards, I started winning. And I didn't think I was worth it. I didn't think I was like worthy, but I started winning these awards. And by because I won these awards, guess what happened? A lot of other people started paying attention. And I was like, this is weird. Like, I haven't done anything in my opinion in my career yet, yet I'm winning these awards. I'm going to market the crap out of this, and it's powerful. This is Beyonce. You guys know Beyonce, obviously. And what's powerful about Beyonce is that she has been nominated for something like 70 Grammys. She's won like 11 or 12 of them. But think about that. She could say 70 time Grammy nominated Beyonce or 12 time NAMI, uh, 12 time Grammy award winning artist. It's just powerful, right? So there's plenty of people that have been nominated for XYZ award three times, four times, 10 times, but never won. Well, you can just say that you've been nominated for that thing a lot. It's just a very powerful way for you to leverage a bigger brand than yours, which is basically every brand out there, to then be like, hey, I'm legit, even if you haven't won that award yet. And yeah, maybe you can go to Waffle House and win the Waffle House Waffle Eating Contest Award. Maybe that's what you're into. It doesn't matter. There's awards for everything, and it's award season, baby. So as I say... If you qualify, 
the plot. So it just so happens that my birthday is in six days. This is not a like your birthday's in six days post. I really could care less about that. Right. But when it's your birthday, you probably wake up and throughout the day, get a notification of ping, ping, ping. Actually, I don't know what the Facebook notification sound is anymore. Cause I don't have, I don't have notifications on my phone. Uh, and I actually don't have Facebook download on my phone either. So I wouldn't know what the notification is, but on LinkedIn and Facebook, it's super easy to wish someone a happy birthday, right? A couple weeks ago is Carson Sweezy's birthday. I could go in there and be like, happy birthday, Carson post, right? On LinkedIn, it does it all automatically. You click a button. It goes, happy birthday, Zach. You're like, wow, I don't even have to, all I have to do is click a button. And then you get like 40,000 messages. I'm going to in six days. Happy birthday, Zach. Happy birthday, Zach. From all these people that like, I don't really have a relationship with that. I haven't talked to in years. And they're going to wish me a happy birthday. And I get it. It's great. It's a safe bet. It's nice. It's nice that people will wish you a happy birthday, right? Or congratulate you on a monumental uh, milestone in your, in your career, whatever that might be. It doesn't have to just be your birthday. But it's the safe bet. It's what everyone else does. And as we talked about earlier, blending in with everyone else, you have to start thinking about ways to not blend in with everyone else. That's what people, that's what most people do. Right. What I want you to do, what I want you to start thinking about are ways that you can take a task that is being done at such a mass level and figure out creative and easy to implement ways to get the results that you want by doing something completely different. So this is another way that I think is amazing. I call it, I actually don't even have a name for it yet. Let's just call it. Happy birthday video. I actually did one yesterday. So if I have your cell phone, and I believe it has to be done on cell phone, so if you email someone this, it doesn't work. Wherever they can get a one-on-one video message that will pop up in their screen is good. I found that email does not work well, um, and I've only actually tested it on email and I guess on Instagram and on Facebook, or not on Facebook, on text message. So what do I do? If I get a message that says, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday. So a couple weeks ago, it was Chris Shelton's birthday. Hey, Chris Shelton, it's your birthday. Most people will go into his Facebook and say, happy birthday, Chris. Hope it's a great year. Again, safe bet. I appreciate that you're wishing people a happy birthday, but you can do something deeper. You can do something more powerful. You can pull out your cell phone. This is what I do. We'll call it the happy birthday method, happy birthday video, whatever. And I simply pull out my cell phone. And if I have someone else's cell phone, I will click to the video and I will say, Hey, Chris, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Hope it goes awesome. Send. What you'll see is that people are not getting videos like this. Now, in three years, when everyone copies this method, guess what? We'll have to be thinking of a different way. But no one does this. I'm literally in my car driving to a meeting at a stoplight. I look down on my phone, I send this video, I shoot the video, and I go. His response back, nice touch. Thanks, bud. That's really thoughtful. And then some sort of emoji that I never know what emojis mean. That might be tears. Who knows? And you do it because you care. And it's a it's a relationship building technique that I've learned works incredibly powerful. So I think that you should steal this method from me and do it. And if you if it works, just you know, at Zach Miller says, and tell me via video, of course, how well this technique works. Or if you've used this in your own, I think you should do it too. It's just another way for you to get in front of people. Um, and you're doing it solely for the reason to say, congrats, thanks, happy birthday, happy anniversary, whatever, with nothing in mind about business at all. It's simply just saying, congrats, thanks, happy birthday, happy anniversary, and letting them know that you care. Maybe they had a surgery. You know, hey, I'm thinking about you. And instead of just sending the text, hope you're doing okay. An email, hope you're doing okay. Instead of just a call, hope you're doing okay. Do this video. A FaceTime message might be better um, than this. But and uh, maybe a call is better too. But this is something that it's not super intrusive. It's super easy to implement. And I have found incredible results with it. Something that I call the fraternity of podcast guests is something very powerful. I want you to be thinking about your alumni networks. Maybe you went to a college university. Maybe you are a part of a organization. Maybe you are a part of 
a plethora of men, like uh, you're a soccer mom, you're a soccer dad, you are part of a Facebook group that is for martial arts studios, whatever it might be. Maybe you also li- like to listen to podcasts. The thing is, is we're all tied to these different alumni networks. We're all tied to these different organizations, yet we never see how the people in that network are connected to someone else that we may be trying to get in touch with, right? So we think about this typically from our college and university alumni networks, but not for any other organizations that we're a part of. So let's say that I want to get in touch with, let's say that I want to get in touch with James Ramsey. I don't know James Ramsey, but I listen to a podcast and uh, that podcast, this is a totally made up story. Uh, that podcast is the Jeremy Johnson podcast. I'm friends with Jeremy, or I used to be on the podcast, or I was also on the podcast with Jeremy, and I leverage that conversation with Jeremy to then get in with someone else that I want to name James, right? And so by leveraging that alumni network, it just so happens to be a podcast here, it can be very powerful. Now, if you weren't the actual guest on the podcast, you're a listener, maybe you're tied to them in some other ways as well, right? It's leveraging those similarities, those trends, those networks that you have to get connected to someone else. For example, I was on the Blind Entrepreneur Show with Jonathan Grisbowski of... Of course, I would try to um, name his business and then absolutely forget it. Sorry, Grisbowski. I'll remember it at some point. Or I could just look it up. His business is called Penji. P-E-N-J-I. Look, I feel like it's important when I name someone to say, yo, what's up? Thank you. So I'm on his show. He has a podcast called The Blind Entrepreneur. I then went through the, for example, I then went through after my talk and I found all of the members that all the people who had also been on the show. This was a network that we were both connected with. And I reached out and I just said, hey guys, I listened to your show. Or hey, like I saw that we were both on the same show. Would love to connect. The guy in the middle, Alex Young. We connected so well that we went on each other's podcast and become friends and, and talk, you know, ever a couple of times a month, right? No business transactions have actually ever come through yet. And that's okay. I'm just building up my network, building up my repu- uh, reputation and trying to create great relationships with people. So great that back in October, Alex actually connected me with Jay and said something I think that is insanely powerful. Jay meet Zach, host of Zach Miller Says, yada, yada, yada. Here's the most important thing, though. He also happens to be one of the most authentic people that I know and is about building real relationships. I didn't ask for this email to be sent. He did it unsolicited. And for him to give me that kind of credit, that's absolutely amazing. And those are the type of messages that we should be trying to shoot for. Yes, transactions and you know money in your wallet's great, too. But stuff like this will help that wallet come because more people will trust you throughout time. Do you know who these four lovely ladies are? They are four women who built incredible relationships. It's the Golden Girls! I know you know who they are. They're great, right? Great individuals. These four ladies built amazing relationships with each other. And if you can do that with the people that you meet at networking events, online in your Facebook groups, through webinars, podcasts amazing things can happen to you as well. Here's another interesting stat that I find insanely fascinating. Did you know that most people are changing their career every 40 months? So if you meet someone at a networking event and you annoy them, you get them on the wrong side of that sales funnel, they're one of the 35 or the one of the negative ones that then get them back up to the 35 positive. Do you know that it takes again 35 positive interactions to get them back? But instead If you found them when they were about to change careers in maybe 39, month 39 and three fourths, and in just two weeks later, they go to this new career that could have helped you tremendously. Maybe they could have done business with you, but instead you went in for the kill that first date. You missed an opportunity. That's why relationships can be so powerful. So instead of trying to kill on the first date, build those relationships first. It can be powerful. Now, you might be thinking, well, how come shopping malls can do this? It's the same reason Amazon can do it, right? Most people have their wallets out when you're at a shopping mall. 
You don't. But when you meet someone for the first time, their wallet is not out, right? When you go to a shopping mall, especially around a a holiday season, that wallet is out and they're ready to spend, right? So unless you are a vendor at a shopping mall, that wallet isn't really out. So you got to build that relationship first. What I want you to be thinking about now and forever is to be in the driver's seat, right? The more that you can control your marketing, the more that you can control those conversations, the more that you can control those convers- those conversations, those relationships, the stronger your business will be because you're in the driver's seat. Now, as I was preparing this talk this morning, as I was preparing this webinar this morning, I decided to add a bonus because it's something that uh, I talk a lot about in the book and uh, it can be very powerful. So a lot of people are trying to get press. If you know me, you know, you know, you know me. Yeah, you know me, Zach Miller. What up? Whoa. I don't know. That was a song that I was trying to go on a spin and I just don't think it went very well. So you guys realize or know that And if you don't know, now you know, I have a journalism degree. I don't practice it anymore, but I understand the media world. And something that's very powerful is if you can take this stuff that I was talking about relationships and build it in with media, you can get a ton of different relationships and media mentions from these people who have tons of exposure. And that's exactly what you're doing. So again, We're trying to create relationships that we were talking about with networking events, but with the press. So let's just say something simple. You Google whatever that local business is. There's a story about them. Robin is the person who wrote the story. You see her mentioned right there. But then there's this little thing that says email and Twitter. It doesn't actually say email and Twitter. It's the icons for both. And what's incredible about this is that this person is doing a story on something maybe that you have some sort of ties to, right? And you can piggyback this story by just reaching out, tweeting Robin or whoever that reporter is and saying, hey, Robin, I saw that story that you wrote. I just thought it was awesome. Or here's some more feedback on that. But when you're looking for these people, maybe it's not the right time for you to be pitching that business. It's probably never the best time. But instead, you want to create a spreadsheet of their information and how that information can later on benefit you because you follow them and help them throughout time. Again, you're not trying to get one featured story. You're trying to get a ton of different stories, a ton of different mentions. So if you can get 100 different mentions on one press outlet a year or all these press outlets a year instead of just one kind of featured piece, what do you think is going to be more powerful? Probably those 100 mentions james no i didn't see it um pretty cool stuff though i guess um send me send me some info on it or link it here and i'll and i'll do it right so this is what my this is an example of what one of mine has looked like in the past right so i'm trying to reach out to different communities around um, small business communities and these are some of the articles and the people that are creating the content right maybe they're actually a journalist or maybe they're just a media producer whatever it is it's their name the publication the topic that they're talking about the you know a link to the article uh their and then their contact information here's some of it right here right and then you follow them right and you engage with them and you say hey great story this was cool i like this or hey like did you did you know that this also existed too i didn't know just wanted to give you a little uh, bonus information maybe it's not a local business maybe it's like a bigger business or something like that same thing put it into google somehow um it comes to hubspot right and there's a story from hubspot same story Lindsay's the author it also says her twitter you put that back into your database you reach out and you start that relationship and you're not selling your business right then and there. What you're doing is you're creating that relationship. Reporters are nosy. So guess what happens? They do, they go to your social profiles. It should be maximized. If you read my book and then guess what? They have, their job is literally to be nosy. So they go through, they find out what you do and they start saying, Oh, well, so-and-so remember the first question we ask, what do you do? If your stuff is maximized to tell correctly what you do, then that journalist can reach out and say, hey, I'm looking for a digital marketing expert to answer this question. Guess what they do? They answer that question for you. All right. So many of you guys know that 
I wrote a book. And that book is, you know, absolutely amazing, of course, because I wrote it. It's been fun. It was fun writing. And it officially comes out April 2nd. Now, for the last few months, some people have gotten their hands on a copy of Anomaly, how to finally stand out from the crowd. And I'm super grateful for all those people who have been able to get a copy. I'm super grateful that um, the early reviews, their early testimonials are incredibly great. And a lot of people are saying this is the book that I wish I had when I started my business career, or this is the book that every entrepreneur needs. Or um, I remember one, one individual, Mandy Snell said something like, this is 18 bucks to get like a billion dollars worth of nuggets. I mean, you can't beat that. That's absolutely amazing. And then Eric Olson said, anomaly. This book right here is a fresh spin on what is usually a boring business book. A lot of the stuff in this book was geared towards individuals looking to better their business, their career, their brands, and to not break the bank. I remember I was giving a webinar, uh, actually a workshop in Franklin, Virginia. This is the first time I ever had this kind of thought maybe three, four years ago, and I gave a talk similar to the one I just did, uh, but in person and this individual blue collar, uh, employee out of business who was, um, one of the people who was supposed to work on the social media for the business or the marketing for the business. And he's like, you know, I go to a lot of these seminars. I read a lot of books, but I feel like after I read these books, after I attend this workshop, I, I leave dumber than I came in. I don't know what to do next. However, after attending your workshop, Zach Miller, I think I understand what to do next. So thank you for that. And so I took that along with a lot of the other techniques and hacks and fun times that I've learned over the last decade or so. And I put them in this bad boy right here, Anomaly, How to Finally Stand Out from the Crowd. And it's a book that isn't super focused on, you know, the, the, the new high tech way to do this. It's about the little things. It's about the things that I think can make bigger impacts on the places where people are already hanging out. And it's the stuff that I've used. Um, everything in this book I've done or the examples that we use have been done by the people in the book. And it's something that's incredibly powerful. And I think a lot of people are looking for that, <laughs> that big shiny toy when it's like, you just got to do a bunch of little things and those little things ultimately end up becoming big wins. And so if you guys are interested in getting a copy, I recommend you going to Amazon. I'll put a link in the description, but all you have to do is go to Amazon, search for my book, you know, search Amazon and uh, I don't know, Zach Miller and you'll find it. Or you could just, Look at the link I'm about to post and grab a copy um, if you want it to be, you know, to arrive by April 2nd, which is the official date. That would be absolutely amazing if you did that. I would be um, forever grateful. If you already have a copy, buy another. I mean, why not? Why not have two copies? I mean, it's that's that's what all the cool kids are doing now, right? And so... It'll arrive April 2nd, which is two days, two weeks from today. And if you want to give me a birthday present and you didn't know what to give, you don't have to give me anything. Buy a book for yourself. That's what I want you to buy for your birthday. Ooh, that's going to be my next uh, campaign. For my birthday, I want you to buy my book for you. <laughs> but anyway, it's it was fun to put together. I'm excited to got, about getting this in you know thousands more hands thousands of more people's hands because I think it's very powerful and a lot of people love the like the super micro chapters um, you know anywhere from two to five pages roughly each um, you know uh, easy read a couple hours lots of implementation available and like little roadmaps at the end so you actually have to do at the end uh, one individual who I met last week who had read it said this is not the type of book you want to read at the beach because as you're reading it all you want to do is start implementing the things that I say to do. And so I guess that's who it's not for, right? If you're going on vacation on the beach, don't read Anomaly. 
I guess you could read it, take the notes, and then go back later. But, you know, whatever. At the end of the day, uh, if you guys have questions for anything that I just asked about, let me know. Um, feel free to ask them in the comments or email me, Zach, at startwithhash.com or all my social handles at Zach Miller says, Z-A-C-K Miller says dot com. Subscribe wherever you're listening. Follow along this journey. If you haven't yet, grab a copy, grab 10, send them to your nine friends. If you if, if everything's great in your business or your career, just buy 20 because your business or your career is doing great. Right? That's all you need to do. Or do a two pack, right? One to read and one that sign and stays on the bookshelf. Or Matt Beach, you could buy a handful of I will come and I will sign them once you get them for your stores. That way, people that are sitting in your office while they're getting their vehicles fixed and repaired, they can read the book as well. I'll come and I'll sign all those as well. But, I mean, it's 18 bucks. Go to Amazon, grab a copy, enjoy it. It'll be on your uh, bookshelf. It'll be uh, delivered April 2nd by those fancy cars that Amazon delivers or however Amazon delivers because there's only like 17 billion ways now, right? But if you have questions, feel free to ask them. If not, I will leave you with this. I've probably given you a ton of knowledge after the, over the last 56 minutes. If I have and you have a couple of bucks, grab a copy, grab 40, grab 100. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know that you got it. And um, when I'm in your neighborhood, I'll sign it. And if I have to fly there, then we'll figure out a way for me to do a talk in your town so that I can sign your book as well. I appreciate you watching. This is a piece of content that absolutely feel free, feel free to share with your friends, your family, your network, or anyone that you think is and needs to hear this message. Feel free to do it. Simply go to the share button and do it. And for more, always just follow me at Zach Miller says. And until next time, have a wonderful day. I'm Zach Miller. Boom. Deuces out. If you have questions, hit me up in the comments at Zach Miller says wherever. Buy a book. It'll be the best $18 investment of your life. Woo.